dad was the Hellraiser. He was a master craftsman cabinet maker. And I remember as a little tiny child, I was kind of afraid of him because he would be gruff and he would instantly just bark at you. Grandpa scared me. <laughs> and you know, I love Grandpa Human because he's so cranky and uh, he yelling at the TV. That was always a fun memory that I laugh when I think about. After a series of orphanages where Grandma had turned him into just sent him off to the orphanage because she didn't want to deal with the kids. He'd tell us stories one year, I think when he turned eight years old, or it was the Christmas when he was eight years old. Somebody gave him 800 pennies for a Christmas present. And she that would have been 1918. And it's a lot of money. And she took that money and bought him a train ticket to an orphanage. Uh, he escaped from all of them. Finally, he eventually escaped from the last one. Got himself a motorbike, and he heads out west. He hopped on trains, he was a hobo, he, he, he told us he'd stop and he'd work in areas. Had some great stories of, of working like picking cherries in one place and he said he got so sick of cherries eating them. He was, in fact he was dating a starlet, he told me who it was and I've forgotten now, but dating a starlet and he was going to be in the, uh, the silent film All's Quiet on the Western Front, which is a big novel. He took a wrong turn and never got in the movie, but they were going to be in the movies. He told me he actually had seen Harry Houdini live. What an adventure it was. I mean, he, it took him about a year to come across the country. So at the age of 15, he arrives in California and he looks at the Pacific Ocean and he said, you know, this looks just like the Atlantic Ocean. Basically, I'm going to go back. This looks the same. And so he was preparing to go back to New York and a man approached him and I don't remember all the particulars, but eventually Grandpa, the man facilitated Grandpa joining the Navy at the age of 15. Dad joined the service. Now, the correct pronunciation is Heumann. So Heumann in German is Heyman. When Dad joined the service, his uh, officer is recruiting him into the military. He says, Heyman. How do you spell that? And he said H-E-U-M-A-N-N. -N. He looks at it. Looks like human to me. From now on, we're calling you human. And so suppose that's how we got our, the pronunciation of our last name. I loved his thumb. And I remember when you were little, you asked if, if Heavenly Father was going to fix that for him when he died. And I always kind of hoped he wouldn't because that was Grandpa. And I remember when he, they buried him, they wanted to put it underneath. And we made him put it on, on top because that was Grandpa. Just the no thumb and no first finger and just the stump. And Grandpa always had stubble, and he would rub your face against it when, he, when you went to give him a kiss or something like that, and we'd laugh and think it was hilarious. And he would make plates. He would take glass, and he had in the back of the shop, he had a thing to, he had a place where he made plates. And so he would create these plates that would have pictures and things. We all got one. Everybody in the family got one. And I remember the... Everybody else in the family had like a fruit on it. They like represented them or something like that. And then mine had like a little baby and a flower. Grandma was born and born and raised in Lincoln, Nebraska. Though they moved to Omaha. When she was little, probably about 1912, that a big event was taking place. They climbed on top of the school and Orville and Wilbur Wright flew over the house, over the building. My mother was a hard worker, diligent. She was named Mother of the Year twice. Dad, being the harebrained stunter puller that he is, got a piece of property, homesteaded property in Bell Gardens, California, and back then it was homesteads. He got three lots, had grand visions of what he was going to do. The faucet for the property was at ground level. Well, Grandma was pregnant with number four, and that was Ronnie, and she had to kneel down to get the water. That was the only water they had, to kneel down and get the water there. They were living in a tent. Grandma was an amazing artist, and um, I think that's where a lot of you boys get that from. And even my girls can draw really, really well. And I think that they just get that from Grandma. I love that. 
she always had this game cupboard that she had at her house that we'd pull out and they were always really old games, but we knew that we could always get in there and get the games out and play those. My grandma, Human, was probably the first example of someone that just loved you no matter what. I mean, she was, I'm gonna cry, was the most wonderful, just the most wonderful woman I'd ever to this day met. And I'm just grateful to have her in my eternal family. The one thing I would like to mention, the one thing I would like to mention more than anything else, is that we lived in a hellhole. Worse than you could possibly imagine. We had neighbors that spent more time behind bars than they did at home. In this sea of iniquity was this island. that uh, my parents raised us. <laughs>